Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're going to be talking about smart loads. And specifically, we're going to be wiring up a smart load to the 12,000 XP and we're going to be programming it. So what exactly is a smart load? Well, a lot of these newer all-in-one inverters, they have a secondary output connection and you can have it automatically turn that on and off um, based off the battery state of charge. So there's really two scenarios that I can think of. There may be more, but the first scenario is say your battery gets up to like 95%, 100% charged. At that point in time, your solar power, you've got solar coming in. If there's nowhere for it to go, it just, it clips it and it'll just use whatever solar it actually needs. So there's a lot of unused solar power that you're not utilizing. So you could have the smart port turn on and power something up to try to use that extra solar power when it's available. Now, what could that possibly be? I think for everybody, it's gonna be dependent on their situation. But for me out here in the workshop, you know, I've got a three ton mini split out here and it'd be nice to keep this shop nice and cool in the summer, but I don't necessarily just want to waste my, my electrical energy to keep the shop cool, especially if I'm not out here all the time. So if I did have extra you know, solar during the day, the batteries were fully charged, it wouldn't be a bad idea to kick on the air conditioner out here. And that could go the opposite direction. Like in the winter time, if you've got extra power, you could go ahead and kick on a heater. So the second scenario that I can think of Instead of turning on a load to use extra power, I think you'd go the other direction. You would actually turn off a load to be able to save your battery so that you don't drain your battery too quickly. So if your battery got down to say like 40% at that point in time, you may want to slow down your power use. And maybe you've got some lighting circuits so you can turn off some lights. Maybe you have some other device that you can turn off that's not necessarily detrimental if it gets powered down. Uh, so in my case, one thing I think of is out in my pond, I actually have a aer aeration system, a pond aerator. And if my battery got too low, I could turn off the aeration system and then it would probably come on the next day once the battery got up to a, a higher state of charge. That would be one of those loads that's not necessary and I could turn it off. Now, when I think of smart loads and I try to like brainstorm and come up with smart loads, I have a hard time coming up with what you could possibly use this for. I think it's really dependent on what people have in their situation. Uh, so if you've got an idea for a smart load, whether you would turn something on or whether you would turn something off, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think. So as we look at the front of the 12,000 XP, we've got a 100 amp breaker, which is our normal output from the inverter. And then there is a 63 amp breaker, which is kind of an odd number, and that is your smart load connection. Now, how would I go about wiring this up to a smart load? With a 63 amp breaker, you would have to size the wire to be at least rated for 63 amps. And if I wanted to run my mini split off of it, that one's probably more like a, a 30 amp load. So it's, it's like, this is way higher than the load that I want to power up. So what I would do is I would wire this breaker up over to another breaker panel. Now, when I say other breaker panel, it doesn't have to be a large breaker panel. It could be something as simple as this, just a, a small enclosure with a single double pole breaker. This is a 30 amp breaker. So this would be the right size for my mini split. So I could wire from this 63 amp breaker over to this. And then from here, I can wire the correct wire size to the mini split and now I've got a smart load hooked up. Now if you wanted to have more than one smart load then you could wire the 63 amp breaker up to a load center. Now this is a fairly large breaker panel here it's 24 spaces but they make load centers that are smaller that only have maybe six or nine breakers in them and you could wire the the load the smart load port up to that load center and then you can put in whatever breaker size is appropriate for the loads that you want to turn on and off. So on the 12,000 XP, you can see I've already got the smart port wired up here. Now the wire I'm using is six gauge THHN and it is 90 degree 
Celsius rated wire. And, that, and this specific wire is rated at 75 amps. So the wire has a higher amperage than the breaker, so it's, it is protected. And then this wiring comes over and it powers up this breaker panel right here. So now that I've got the smart port wired up, what am I actually gonna use it for? Now you can see behind me, I've, I've got a few different solar power systems. Now this one specifically is used to power up this workshop. And you know, there's some weeks I'm out here three days working, there's other weeks I'm only out here like one day. So the power usage on this system, it, it, it fluctuates quite a bit. It's very inconsistent. Um, so there ends up being several days a week where there's a lot of extra power on this that doesn't get utilized. So what I'm gonna wire up is the EG4 charge verter. Now this is basically a 48 volt battery charger. Uh, it's a smart charger. It can communicate with the solar batteries if you, if you need it to. But what, I, what I'm planning on doing is I am going to, when this battery bank gets full and I've got extra solar power, I'm going to go ahead and turn on this charge verter and I'm gonna have it use the extra solar power to charge the battery bank on my other inverter. So this is my 12K PV. It's got about 7,600 watts of solar on it. And then it has a wall mount battery and a couple server rack batteries hooked up here. Now this inverter, it is grid tied and it's actively trying to zero my meter. And then once the batteries get full, if there's extra solar power, it does sell back that power to the power company. Now the battery bank that I have, it is about 24 kilowatt hours here. And if it is fully charged by, you know, six, seven o'clock at night, it will completely drain this battery bank overnight to down to like the minimum state of charge. So the battery bank definitely could be bigger. So if I can utilize my other inverter to just guarantee or help guarantee that this battery will be fully charged by the end of the day, I think that's gonna work out great, especially on cloudy days. Now on sunny days when this actually charges up on its own, if I'm using this one, this will actually charge faster. It'll get to 100% faster and then I'll start selling back power faster. So I think either whether it's a cloudy day or a sunny day, any power that I can shift from this system over to this, I think that's gonna work out great. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the wall. And then I've got the charge verter. I got it wired over here to the battery bank. Now I'll go ahead and I'll plug in the charge verter. So hopefully you can see the screen did not come on and that's because the smart port is not turned on yet. Now, if I turn on the DC breaker, this will actually power up from the batteries. So let me turn on the DC breaker. You see it come on? It's just it's coming on from that 48 volt power side. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and program the smart port. So I've already played around with the smart port. I've tried all the different settings. So I'll try to, I think I understand them fairly well. I'll try to explain them. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the settings up here on the screen beside me. So of course the first one is to enable the smart port. You gotta do that for it to be able to turn on and off the power to this breaker. Now the, the next one down, it says grid always on. And when I first read that, it, it doesn't operate the way that I would think it was. And when you click on the description, it, it says something about a generator port. So it's got a bad description in the, in the monitoring software. So the way the grid always on works, since this is an off grid inverter, you know there's like a built-in transfer switch here. So it's either on solar and batteries or it transfers over and then the load is powered from the grid. So if you have grid always on, anytime the grid is powering the, the main output on here, it will turn the smart port on and power the smart port from the grid. Well, to me that doesn't really equal energy savings or being able to utilize extra energy. So I, I'm leaving that turned off. I do not want to power this device or any of the devices on this port while the grid is actively powering the, the loads. So the next setting down is the minimum PV wattage to start or turn on the smart port. Now I don't know if a lot of inverters have this setting, but it, it allows you 
to at least look at how much solar panel power you have coming in and make a decision whether you want to turn on the smart port. So say your battery is 100%, but you only got like 500 watts of solar coming in, not a lot of extra solar to use. You may not want to turn on the, the, the smart port. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility on how to turn it on and off. Now the next setting is the battery state of charge to start or turn on the smart port. And for my situation, I'm gonna wait till the battery is 95% full. And then that also works in conjunction with the, the PV wattage. So as long as the battery is 95% and as long as the PV wattage is 500 or higher, my smart port is gonna turn on. They're kind of a, you have to have both of those true to be able to turn on the smart port. Now the next setting down is the battery state of charge to turn off the smart port. Now in my case, once the battery goes down to like 90% state of charge, I'm gonna go ahead and have it turn off. So right now the battery on this system is 72% and we're gonna to have to allow this to a charge for a few hours. Once it hits 95%, it should turn on the charge verter, start charging the other system. So I got this all set up about 9.30 this morning. It is now 5.27 in the evening and it's been a rainy overcast day and the fun, the fun, the sun finally came out a couple hours ago and we just reached 95% on this. It turned on the smart port and now the charge verter is finally charging the other battery bank. All right, so you, hopefully you can see it is charging at 50 amps. That's what I have it set at. So right now this system is at 74% charged and we've only got maybe an hour and a half of sun left in the day, but uh, whatever extra power we do have, at least it's gonna put that in this battery bank over here, and that's gonna help me make it through the night. So this is the way that I have decided to use the smart load on the 12,000 XP. It's probably a little bit outside the box or a little unusual because you can really only do this if you've got multiple systems like I do. But I do think that this is actually gonna benefit me. Um, so I'm gonna be able to use this system when it has extra power to boost my other system. So yeah, I think this is gonna work out great. And I'm definitely interested to hear from you guys, like what you, how would you guys use a smart load on an all-in-one inverter? Because I'm sure you guys got a lot of ideas, a lot of things that I haven't even thought of. So um, I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.